I'm just heading north now from some time away over Christmas and en route back to Sheffield I'm stopping off to see Derek Barrett who many of you may know he's uh, he's got a lot of followers on Instagram he does fitted furniture here in oh I think it's Buckinghamshire I might have got that wrong <laughs> uh, near Ellsbury and uh, he's out in beautiful countryside so I'm, I'm almost there just trying to find it somewhere up here in some farms some farm buildings to the right he should be meeting me so I'm coming to pick up a board lifter that he's selling and we'll see if he can make a little bit of time for us just to see part of his workshop and perhaps pick his brains on some things right hi Derek uh, you're on camera now I managed to twist Derek's arm to get his face on camera uh, talk us through this this lifter Derek that I'm just so going to buy off you bought this um close to two and a half years ago now um spotted it on ebay uh just wanted to save breaking my back and stuff so that is a normal electric one but it's all manual um you've got it's pump action so straight it it goes faster when there's no load on it but well, when there's a load on it it goes a bit slower because it evens the pressure out um and then just literally turn it to let it down and what I do is I, I usually do it that I can run it level with the saw next door so I can slide the board straight on the saw without breaking my back. Uh, but now I've upgraded to the... So it's a BT lifter. I, I know that name for these kind of things. Yeah, in fact, so... there's some, some ancient knackered ones of these. It's a slightly different model in the, the workshop that we're about to rent, but they're, they're beyond repair. Yeah, these are really compact. So you've got... Um... Um, it's exactly, if you look at the bottom, it's the exact same build as what the other one is. Yeah, so it's got a wide It's got the wider base, legs to support. Which means that you could you could put a pallet on the floor, that's the idea of that, isn't it? That's it, and um, the only negative thing happens is if they happen to just run in where the tyre is on the truck. Yeah. Um, Good morning, yeah. yeah, okay. So, but exactly what that one was doing, I just... Yeah. And did you buy this one brand new or second hand? Uh, this is second hand, so I, got, I, I had Toyota come out. Um, I had Toyota come out with um, a brand new one to test out. My biggest worry was the ground. My biggest worry was the ground. Would it drive over these nooks and crannies uh, out there on the the rough ground outside? Would it actually uh, drive round? And it worked a treat. Okay. Because um, it needs to get out to the lorry, doesn't it? Yeah. To, to yeah. take the delivery, obviously. So the one I looked at was a bit more head side shift. You could actually, uh, from this as a stable position, this could go all forward. So the tire thing wouldn't have been an issue and things like that. Okay. Um, but they were all extras that didn't really need. Um, but they were 16 grand. Oh, really? <laughs> so yeah. uh, I didn't fancy financing something. At that stage, I was only using twice a month or whatever. But we're getting to a stage now where we're getting weekly deliveries. Okay. And we're trying to bulk buy a bit more so now that uh, we can get better prices and stuff. But like the one you're about to purchase and stuff, it's exactly the same scenario. And you just line it up to your board. Grab your sheet. So much easier. And yeah, that's going to make a huge difference to us. And that, um, How much did this machine set you back then, if you don't mind me asking, second hand? Uh, second hand was about just under 4,000. Okay. Um, which isn't bad money for what it is. Um, yeah. It came with a year's full MOT. <clears throat> and then um, there's, he says very little maintenance. He says not servicing you have to do like the other forklifts and stuff. Mm -hmm. As you can see from the whip, I don't, I, everyone says just buy yourself an electric or gas forklift, but I wouldn't have the space to back it up. I see it is quite compact, isn't it? That's is this just electric powered? It's just battery powered, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about the saw, Derek. This looks looks like a pretty impressive saw, Robland, right? Robland. So I I bought the seat, not CZ, I bought the edge bander last year. I've been dealing with Mark's Field Machinery in um, uh, up 
north there and uh, mm -hmm. they're really um really helpful i bought the the guna extractor from them as well which is remote control so what i was finding was <laughs> hear the bell but that's because the same frequency. Oh is that right? <laughs> it triggers the bell. <laughs> it's the same frequency as the bell. So um, but what I found was when the uh, if I had someone helping me out on the saw uh, the extractor button the extractor used to live in there and the on off switch was in behind it and no one would go around the saw turn it on for small one two three cuts. Mm. There'd always be a cut list fair enough turn it on stay on it but for small jobs and that's the killer all the dust starts filling up the workshop from the okay. small cuts, not the big jobs. So okay. um, the remote was a bonus, definitely. It's a HIPAA filtered, um, was around just under 2000 plus to that, I think for that. Okay. Bought that in my first year. Uh, and then I upgraded, I had a saw, a Robland Z250, which I brought back from Ireland, which was a single phase. Uh, which was like gold dust in this country. Uh, they were very happy to take it in a trade in because oh, uh, a single phase machine, you could perfectly put it into a garage or someone's yes. house and stuff. Uh, and I, that was a sliding panel saw, was it of the same panel, sort of length? So, uh, all manual adjustments and yeah. stuff. I had it since 2007, loved it. Uh, 1999, I think it was a machine. I bought it for three and a half thousand in Ireland. Um, when I moved back and I shipped it over, but then I realized what the Z250 stood for was the two, we only did 2.5 uh, meter cut. I see. So I didn't use too many 10 foots in Ireland, so I didn't really think about it that much. I just presumed it was the saw that could cut what we were using when I came back to England. So uh -huh. then I realized I was really struggling. I needed a three meter saw. So my next purchase then is I traded it into these guys and I bought the NZ3200 which is, and I added in a couple of digital readouts onto that saw. So it had electric, did it have a, I think it had electric rise and fall, uh, and it had digital readouts on this side and that side, but it was a 2009 saw. So. It's a good saw, so, uh, but uh, the, the, the brake burnt out in it, and uh, I, had, I, I, I had just done the, just bought the edge bander. And I felt that uh, I was I had planned to get a new saw, so, but not so quickly. So I contacted the guys. They gave me a fantastic trade in. They pretty much gave me what I paid for it nearly because they had a buyer to oh, go great. straight yeah. out. So I got a fantastic yeah. deal from them. And um, I went down then to view the because I had bought the OAV edge bander. They were they were saying they had an OAV saw, which is a lovely machine. Don't get me wrong. The, the sliding table, everything's kind of based on the Altendorf. Um, but the digital readout bit was a bit, don't get me wrong, it's a bit 80s and I okay. just felt little things here and there were just, the quality was a little bit less, even though the price reflected that, the flight uh -huh. was still a good price. Uh, so I was going in to buy the Z400, not necessarily the X1, but they were like, you're buying exactly what you already had. And they didn't talk me into it, uh, but I did fall in love with the whole a digital thing and I, I, I was I had a couple of big jobs come in so you know every size so we'll go 300 these are presets so these are all your last cuts you would have done uh -huh. so we'll just say 300 so that says go around the saw uh, alternates doing whatever it, it, it's all it's, it doesn't sound like much but the amount of time it saves it's interesting because it, it does seem like an incredible level of luxury that I, I didn't even consider at, I didn't at my consider stage. it two years ago when I was coming to yeah. you into um, like I started in 2017 but, but it's because I suppose I tend to think of this sort of saw as in a big setup with lots of staff but I, I guess when you're just you your time is so precious yeah. that not having to go around this to move that for each car exactly. is going to be a saving, isn't it? That's exactly it. And, and we, I mean, I'm starting to clock onto this because I, I invested in staff, I think, sh sooner than I should and before before the machinery. And I'm just catching up now and getting a sliding panel saw. And I see a lot of the more successful guys on it, on Instagram staying small, but yeah. investing in the machinery. That's the and that's yeah. definitely what I did last year. Uh, like I've got to a stage now where I have, I think, bar a decent, don't get me wrong, that's fantastic. But I wouldn't mind a, a proper four bag, 
extraction yeah. that does the whole get it piped well, properly. Well, I, I was going to ask you about that as well because um, I imagine setting up our new workshop with a, a massive extractor and pipes going to every machine. But most places that I see, you have a number of a, a number of different runs of extraction, don't you? Yeah, because it's a it's a big deal to set the whole thing up. Not cheap when you, yeah. you need to come in and do all the pipe work, but it's. I think that's the last thing I need to. That's maybe next big event, barring my van breaking down or something. Okay. Yeah, we never know what's going to happen, do you? But, is, is this over here? Is this something you use? So the edge sander. Um, I bought this when I came in here. So I got this from a crowd in Oxford that did windows and stuff. I got this for about fifteen hundred, including the vat. Hmm. But I've added this on as an, an, an extra. So. Uh, edge sanders are fantastic for getting the perfect edges when you're spraying and stuff but the only thing i found was um uh, when you're doing long panels yeah you're constantly pushing okay but you're stopping as you're pushing yeah and that it's not a consider it's grand for small panels so i knew the last company i left i knew they got rid of the spindle molder and uh and I knew they had the power feed, so I managed to get one of these for 50 quid. <laughs> oh, that's not bad, so is it? We, me and the guy next door, the wood turner, we uh, bolted it all on to here. We drilled some holes, bolted it on. I see. So now I'm and so it's not just it's not just about labor saving it's the the consistency of the feed that you that's it you get one from that. Piece, yeah. straight piece straight through you yeah. got the back you can use for just hanging rail, roll rail, or blending in holes and stuff. And so, so that's what you use to, to sand your MDF edges? No. no. Yes, I do. Okay. But what I did, what I learned in the last couple of years was I edge band uh, all my MDF. But when it comes to shaker doors, yes. and the way I construct my shaker doors is I plant on my 9 mil onto my 12 mil. Yeah. So you're always going to have that inside edge of the shaker style. So that's a dream for that kind of stuff. So running through all your 9 mil strips. Uh, so they're already yeah. pre-sanded before this they get primed and stuff and you get you put them through there twice what's the what's the grit that you run through uh, uh is it's actually 80, 80, 80 grit. i found it was it works a lot better uh than because you'll still finish it by hand like a basic sand with okay. some 240 whatever but that big belt the pad sander i have upstairs uh -huh. i made the mistake of buying 180 or 240 grit first and it, it was like paper on paper it wasn't doing anything oh, to really? it okay. so i don't know what it is it's probably the speed the speed uh -huh. of it uh and that but oh, so yeah the itech spindle molder over here is that something you use much it's funny because in my first year and a half i used it um i used it pretty much on a daily basis i used to do my scribe slightly different so i used to use um i used to 45 so two bits of 100 mil strips of 18 mil MDF, 45. So you'd run your piece through, uh, 45 it, and then run another piece 45, mask and tape, and then mitre fold uh -huh. piece. So you had an L section, and they were my scribes. So, so you had something to screw from the inside of the carcass. You could screw, so it was one whole piece that slotted into yeah. the side. Uh, you'd scribe this side, but the idea then, having them L, was you could put them back to back in a workmate, and then sit the plunge saw straight on top of them and it all held together perfectly because one L section would support the track. Okay. So you're like up in the middle, L like that, track on top, line up your lines, 15 degree angle with the plunge saw and then finish it off. Is but, that what you do, a 15 degree angle for your scribe cut and then trim in the And then little... put the Bosch, little Bosch electric planer or hand plane or I sand see. them in. Okay. But then you scribe uh, started to come out and as much as I like good ideas and stuff like that, I sometimes go, you can see why people stick in their ways and stuff like that. Yeah. But I, so many people were using it. And You're I talking about the u jig that's quite big on uh, Instagram. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I kind of, I, I got on with the guys really well, but I never used it for quite a while. And then, uh, and then I start getting my head around it because they do the infinity scribe. Because the way I did my scribes were, it felt like you had to cut it five mil off the wall and then trace it. And then cut it, but you felt like you were cutting it. So twice. you're cutting twice. Yes, yeah. I know what you mean. To but, to get it small enough that you, so can, you can place it, it parallel yeah. and then scribe it. So it wasn't until uh, someone told me about the infinity scribe, which was you cut the off cut. Let's say a hundred mil is your scribe. hundred mil is your piece. Uh -huh. you cut floor to ceiling. Cut off the off cut you have of that. 
you set the U scribes to the the back edge. So I know what you're saying. Yeah. Then, so the U scribe jig holds it. It's it sort of sat. If you're scribing to a wall here, the workpiece is sat on the other side of the U scribe jig as far as it needs to go. Really. That's yeah. what I do now. That yeah. is literally how I do all my um, my scribes and stuff. But I use, uh, I'll show you. Uh, yeah. Twitter. But just go back to that. I haven't used it in a year. Oh, really? It's amazing. Uh, I don't do much joinery work, so we don't do windows or any of that kind of stuff. Like I said about my shaker doors, mm -hmm. I do them a certain way. If I got a kitchen that came up, like a solid oak or maple or something like that, and you spray, I would probably go to somewhere like the Shaker Door Company that would get supply, them to make it. supply them. And I would yeah. do all the frames and then just sheet the doors in myself. Well, we don't have a spindle molder and don't intend to get one in this next uh, round of spending. If it was me, I'd say um, uh, I, would, I, I could do without it now, uh, that yeah. kind of thing. I don't do you have a router table? Do you, do you often, I do you not even router, need that I have much? a Triton. Uh, yeah. I think they have a better one out at the moment, but to be honest, I just use the Festool router and do whatever I need to do with bear okay. and cut, like bear and cut uh, cutters and stuff sure. like that. Uh, just bought the high tachy behind you. Mm -hmm. um, that chops up. That's, That's uh, I'm really looking forward to that one now because um, with the laser, you've got fine adjustment on the back, so mm -hmm. you can cut to this side of the blade, the middle of the blade. Or to the other side oh, of the blade. So when and I do is that a double bevel as well from the looks of it? Does that yeah, angle so each you way? can go right over to fifty, whatever it is, fifty. I think that is I'll take the back end. But it does go over to nearly sixty degrees. Uh -huh. um, but for the understair storage and things like that, yeah. I'm gonna definitely feel the benefit of uh, so what I do is I put my scribes up, draw my pencil line, and then I used to have to line it up with the blade. And then cut it. Yes. Now I can match it up to I see. The, the laser perfectly. It's worth having, if you've got a laser, it's worth having a good one, isn't it? I had a laser on, it's a, just a fairly cheap Metabo yeah. saw, and it was never much good, so I just didn't use it. No, it does, it does, uh, it, uh, but I haven't, I only got it before Christmas, so I've yet to get full go at it. Um, okay. So let me just show you what I use for my scraps. So we pre do. Twenty-five mil strips of MDF, uh -huh. edge banded, yeah, on one edge. So that's going to be the seam edge. So that then, and that's uh, I'm sure you'll show us the edge bander in a minute. But that's yeah. a paint grade edge band, right? It's not necessarily. I've been okay. using ABS and PVC for years, and they do do a paintable grade one as well. But it's much for a much. I reckon they just put paintable on it. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> okay, but so I've been getting thing. away. With, never had an issue it's with a chipping or it's bond, and uh, that's paint. not that's not water based paint, is it? I wonder if it might not bond so well with water based, which we I use. Can't comment. It's, yeah. it's pre cut or uh, an AC yeah. kind of primer that we will be using. But then the other piece we have is so so we groove strips of eighteen mil. Uh, I used to router these uh, with the biscuit cutter, um, yeah. but what I found was the mess. It was just it was just crazy. It's hard I to catch about, stuff yeah. stuff around. And I was trying it? to do, I was thinking about doing it on the spindle and get a cutter for it. But we found the best way of doing it was with the biscuiter itself. Just oh, really? clamp it down because this none of this gets seen. You can screw this to your bench, pop yeah. your biscuiter in, and then just run your biscuiter, so you, and it sucks. You got all, your dust extraction. It sucks it all yeah. away, and it works really well. So. We do a 1.6 mil radius on the, the good side. Uh -huh. Then these will just say like this, what's happened here. Yeah. Oh, then, so this is like, no, so, sorry, tell me, so, I'm not sure I'm following yet. Go on, yeah. yeah. So forget, say this was solid, say yeah. this was the yeah. internal. So then these bits then will get screwed on to the side of your melamine cabinet. Uh -huh. So that piece is gonna be hidden, hidden in the end, yeah. Then you've got your, I'll grab a scrap piece here. Then you've got your 25 mil, which is edge banded. Mm -hmm. you've, you've got your set distance of your biscuiter. Then you use it on the surface, biscuit, biscuit. Mm -hmm. You've got 22 mil doors. So this is this method with this sample piece, this would be for a scribe that scribe. sits outside, it doesn't overlap. No, the so this would be up here, melamine to the cabinet. Edge of your doors. Yeah, so this is a melamine cabinet, we'll yeah. say. So that literally then pops in like that, done. You don't need to think about where you put the biscuits because they don't relate to anything bar the distance. Yeah, so so 
I just had a call which interrupted that video, but so that's that's your method for your scribes. Yeah. Then. So yeah. these are the other little blocks you might huh? come in, you might like. Um, yeah. So what we do is we do a long strip of a hundred mil, eighteen mil, then some six or nine mil mitre bond. Yeah. Straight on top of them. So you have one long strip and then the nine mil or six mil that's wider. Yeah. Uh, mitre bond straight on. Uh, I do a little forty five just to give us a little guide kind of uh, piece. So the idea of that then is, if you do build your furniture up in the workshop, or if you don't, what you could do is you can make a jig. So you know that's in the right place. That then gets fixed to there. Okay. And then that slots in. So you leave that attached at all times to your piece of furniture when you go to site. Okay. So when you go and fit your scribe in, you know it's always going to go back to the same place. Uh, always goes back to the same place. So they, they because, because, for example, what you might want, you might want to set your scribe yeah. two mil forward so to account you, for your door buffers or something like you, that. So I used to use eighty mil uh, for my doors, uh, yeah. but I've met all these out of twenty five mil. So if I was doing an eighty mil on a twenty five, I'd have to set the twenty five mil in. And is that to avoid, is that because you'd rather Well, I wouldn't want 25 mil, yeah, you don't want to have 25 mil out here and then an 80 mil door. Which no, no. Be. So okay. that would sit in 2 mil. Uh, then if you use, again, if you use something else, like you could spray this the same colour as the paint of the wardrobe and use a 25 mil door and a 25 mil infill, but you'd have to put it forward 3 mil. And so you just made the decision to standardise these scribes I so you 20, just make a batch 20, 22 is my most standard okay so by having 25 the join will always be on the, the point there um but then there's the uh, you can use these so these are a lot of people do be interested in these these work quite well um could be a little market in them even but um, yeah, I see yeah yeah so okay. what the other thing i was just going to say to you if you can make up I just did, sorry to interrupt you. I'm, I'm wondering why you can't just leave the uh, the grooved strip itself pre-fitted because the the because scribe we, flat, we flatten down everything that gets painted because this is for melamine. Yeah. And then this. I'm is, imagining that's yeah, melamine. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I understand where you're coming from there, but I have a hundred mil plinths. Uh huh. This is a bad example, but we have a hundred mil plinths normally on our wardrobes, which mean that these run through so they want to go down to the floor so you the don't floor. want them sticking These over get sprayed the color of the the wardrobe oh because they become visible then do they, they with the plinth visible. being set back i did give this a go which was uh -huh. blocks so like you said you could cut cut your groove strip to the height of your yeah. melamine side and then these could go in at the bottom uh -huh. So this, this would be your scribe going through, and yeah, then yeah. they could just slot in, and then you're just sending them up to the sprayer to spray. Yeah. Uh, so that was an option I went through, but they were a bit flappy and stuff. Where, yeah, pros uh, and cons to And the other yeah. thing was, as well, if you had screws for fixed shelves or screws for the tops and bottoms, that strip would be covering them. So you'd end up taking it off, putting it on, taking it off, putting it on. I see. So it's them yeah, kind of things okay. as well that cause. But... We did a wardrobe which we didn't build, a big job in Redden, um, and we made up little jigs. So they were preset on the boards. So that's a preset measurement. Oh, okay. So you could do that if it's something that you don't build them all in the workshop, that you could have this as a, a preset measurement. And then they're already a screw to the side of the cabinets in, in, on site. Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah, it's great.
All right, so then we can, we can just shunt it off the forks, can't we? And that should just sit. All right. Yeah, you've still got a foot or so. That'll go in, won't it? Nice one. Just got to figure out how to get it out again. Sure, we'll scar it out. <laughs> yeah, all right. Without damaging my, that little van is what I came in. Oh, is it? Okay. Distance. Yeah, we'll manage. We'll wheel arch after it, but... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to have to go easy now, all the way up to Sheffield now, aren't I? Um, but I'll show you some prongs as well. Those um, were very handy when I had it for machinery. Well, there's different prongs? Yeah. The 1.5. So those will, those will go on? They clip on, so they slide on and then drop. On top of the existing prongs? Yeah. thanks, Sam. Yeah, cheers for that. Um, but that sander, I was able to unload that from the back of my van with that fork. So same little van, you, you, you transported that in? Yeah, that van, I picked that up, they forked that into the back of my van. And those prongs, a, a rat, a, you can get some purple straps like those ones hanging down by uh -huh. the door. Just wrap them round, had them pick that up with the longer forks. And uh, then what you do is you drive the van away. Oh, I see. And then drop it down onto a, a, a normal. I see, yeah, that's good to know.